Photobiomodulation is a growing area of interest and has applications in all areas of medicine. It's pretty exciting. We're seeing reductions in arthritic knee pain, improvement in autoimmune thyroiditis, improvement in autoimmune joint pain conditions, improvement in wound healing, um, uh, skin quality, all sorts of things. But what are the sort of settings that are needed? Well, I have a device that's the Photonodynamis, and on this device we have two lasers. One of them is the uh, Erbium YAG, the other one is the Neodymium YAG. So when we're doing photobiomodulation, the best wavelength that you can have for going deep into the tissues is the neodymium YAG. This is because the wavelength 1064 doesn't interact with water, so it's able to penetrate deeper into tissues than other wavelengths. Then the next thing you need is the right sort of setting. So from the research, a really good pulse duration for PBM, photobiomodulation, is 0.1 millisecond. So ideally you have a device that can achieve 0.1 millisecond. The photonodynamis is able to do that. And then you also need to get the right sort of fluence. Most studies that showed a positive effect had a fluence that was less than 10 joules per centimeter squared. Tissues with higher mitochondrial concentrations, like the heart, the kidneys, muscle, those were more likely to achieve treatment failure because of overtreatment, meaning too much energy rather than too little energy. And then tissues that have relatively lower mitochondrial content, like the intestines, those tend to achieve treatment failure because of too low of dose as opposed to too high of dose. So I'll show you how you can get this on the Photonodynamis because it's not easy unless you buy a special handpiece. So you can buy one of their Marco handpieces. They have preset protocols on how to use the Marco handpiece with PBM. But if you have the R33, which is going to come with the Dynamis in the base package, then you can still do photobiomodulation. Ideally, you want to use the 9mm lens. But we're going to do a little trick where on the menu, and let me, let me zoom in here to the screen so you can see it well. So on the menu, we're going to go to Neodymium YAG. We're going to go to Expert. And then even though we have a 9mm lens in, I'm actually going to say it's a 4 millimeter lens. What that is going to do is it's going to change my joules per centimeter squared. The machine is going to deliver 20 joules per centimeter squared if it was 4 millimeters. But since we actually have 9 millimeters, there's about a five-fold difference in surface area between a 4 millimeter diameter circle and a 9 millimeter diameter circle. It's an easy equation to figure that out, but you don't need to know. Maybe I'll put it up on the screen. So I want it to be less than 10 joules per centimeter squared. So at 20 joules per centimeter squared and 4 millimeters, divide that by 5, that puts us at 4 joules per centimeter squared when it's put through this 9 millimeter device. And the, the reason I, I take it down to 4 millimeters is because then it will allow me to go down to 0.1 millisecond. If I have it up at 9, uh, a 9 millimeter lens, the device will not let me go down that low. Also, also, the device won't let me go below 10 for my joules per centimeter squared. So by taking it down to 4, I achieve both, a, both goals of the right pulse duration and the right joules. So now I can go as low as 2 joules. So I can take it down to a 2 millimeter diameter circle, and that's going to end up being 1 20th of a 9 millimeter diameter circle. So now if I'm at 20, well, now I'm at one joule per centimeter squared. If I go to 10, now I'm at half of a joule per centimeter squared. So a, a lighter level like that would be really good for treating the skin. But if we want to go uh, get, get deeper tissues, usually we're going to use a higher fluence is what the research suggests. Even though fluence doesn't determine depth when we're dealing with photobiomodulation with uh, neodymium YAG, um, it's actually the wavelength that's determining depth but the degree of stimulus that you're getting, the amount of radiance that you're getting, is uh, related to the fluence. So there you have it. This is how you can do photobiomodulation with a photonodynamis without having to buy an extra handpiece, but just using with what it comes with. Of course, you may want to consider buying that handpiece because they can be very helpful, and you can get bigger spot sizes, like the 22 millimeter spot size instead of the 9 millimeter. You can cover more area more quickly. My general use dosage is about 6,000 joules per region. 
So if I'm treating an SI joint, I'll look to put 6,000 joules in that area. But listen to the patient about feedback. If there's not an effect, trying more or less the next time to see if we get a better effect. Thank you very much for watching my video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already and to like this video and check out my other ones.